Hello everyone and welcome to Alumni Talk. Our webinar today will be devoted to Essex Business School and its Global MBA program. My name is Ornita and I'll be your moderator today on behalf of Unimai. I'd like to thank you all for joining us and to welcome our panelists, Patty Brown, Global MBA Program Director, Victoria Rogers, Global MBA Admissions Manager, and Priya Verma, MBA Alumna Class 2020, currently Assistant Manager at the CFO Advisory Services Department at EY. The only session will start with a brief presentation of the program, followed by a panel discussion in which Priya will share with us more about her motivation to start an MBA, her academic experience, and how the MBA at Essex contributed to her career development. At the end of the webinar, there will be a Q&A session in which our panelists will be answering your questions. So if you have any questions, please write them down in the chat box and we'll take the time to address them later. Before we start, let us just double check if the sound is okay. If you can hear me, would you please write a yes in the chat box? Okay, great, thank you. All seems set. So now I'll give the word to Victoria and Patty. Hi, everyone. Uh, so welcome to Essex Business School's Global MBA uh, presentation. Uh, I'm Victoria Rogers. I'm one of the recruitment managers here at Essex. I'm also a recent alumni, so I'm happy to also offer uh, my, my perspective on the program. Uh, so a little bit about what we're going to cover today. Uh, first, we'll start with an introduction. Uh, so I'll introduce uh, my other panelists that are joining me today from Paris and London, respectively. And then we'll talk about the program, uh, what you can expect from your year at ESSEC. We'll talk to Priya a little bit about her alumni experience, and then we'll open it up to the Q&A. So uh, please, I encourage you to send Zornista any questions that you have so that we can make sure that we touch on them. Oh, and also at the end, there will be the opportunity to take down um, our contact information so that you can get in touch with us after the session. So again, I'm Victoria. Um, Priya, I'll let you say hello real quick. Yeah, hi, this is Priya. And then uh, the legend, Patty Brown. I don't know about that, but hi, my name is Patty Brown. I'm the, I'm the program director. Go ahead, Victoria. All right. So what can you expect from the ESSEC Global MBA? Well, it's a 12 month, so it's a one year intensive MBA that happens in either of our campuses in Paris or in Singapore. So you have the opportunity during the year to specialize between one of our two majors. So luxury brand management, which happens exclusively at our Paris campus or strategy and digital leadership, which is taught concurrently between Paris and Singapore. What's nice about the strategy and digital leadership track because the education has happened concurrently, you have the opportunity to exchange between both campuses throughout the year and be exposed to not only Europe or not only Asia, but the both of them. So I apologize if you hear uh, snow falling off the roof. We have about a meter of snow uh, here. So uh, if you hear something shrieking, that's on this end. So what the program looks like throughout the year, from September through about the end of May, you'll be focused on learning in the classroom. So the beginning of the year will be those core MBA fundamentals, so strategy, finance, marketing. And as the year progresses, you'll focus more and more on the courses dedicated to either strategy and digital leadership or luxury brand management. Now, once the uh, in the classroom learning sort of comes to a, uh, an end, you'll focus on working on your capstone consulting field project. So what that looks like is there will be different project projects for the luxury brand management major, as well as the strategy and digital leadership folks. So different companies will come in and pitch the projects that they would like the MBAs to work on. So these could be challenges that they're facing in their current business, um, different opportunities for expansion, and you and your classmates will apply for the ones that you find the most compelling for your career goals. <clears throat> Victoria, if I could give just an example of some of the capstones and Priya chime in on here. Last year, we started a partnership with Station F, which is the largest tech hub in Europe. Uh, to offer startups. A lot of our, our participants come from places where they've been working for big companies and big companies right now to hire you want a startup experience. So they wanted to have a startup experience. So this year, uh, Priya had an amazing uh, experience. She can talk about that in a minute. We have uh, several different kinds of capstones. Number, we have five capstones based out of StationNet. We have an exclusive capstone that's new this year with Huawei on ethics and AI that we're very excited about. We've got another one for digital payments with Cada Agricole. 
And a last one, working with Generali and Europe Assistance on sustainability and mobility. Um, so people apply for those. That's just for the strategy track in surging. Uh, in terms of luxury, that's all with the big luxury houses, the classic ones that you already know the names of. So those are an example of capstones that are going on. Right now, we're doing the selection process. I have a meeting while well, tomorrow morning and students will start selecting after a presentation, selecting the capstone that they want to work for, for three months from April to the end of June. Uh, Priya, do you wanna to touch on a little bit uh, yeah. about your capstone project? Sure, thank you, Patty. Yes, like she mentioned that we have Station F, which is the startup incubator for Europe. And uh, uh, since I'm a 2020 graduate, we had an opportunity to go and attend the presentation from various programs. And uh, those were like some budding startups and some already established startups. So it's a very good opportunity for people from very di different backgrounds to choose what they would like to do after their MBA. And it's kind of a stepping stone in terms of getting that hands-on work experience that you would potentially be able to sell yourself with when you go into the interviews after your MBA. So uh, I, I feel that it adds a lot of value to the program and uh, as well as to your experience. So yeah, we can talk about it late, later in the Q&A if there's more questions. Absolutely. Thank you, Priya. Um, and yeah, so what, so kind of throughout that process, you'll be taking everything that you learned in the class and putting it into a real life practical example. Um, and so at the end of those three months, you will uh, do a large presentation to members of the company you're working for, as well as faculty members. Um, you'll send over a report. And with that, uh, you've sort of finished your MBA degree. Um, so now to kind of, uh, you know, refocus in at the beginning of the year um, and throughout the, the course of your experience at ESSEC, you'll also uh, have the opportunity to travel to three to five different countries on field trips. These are really designed to showcase students the different markets, the different challenges that those markets are facing. Uh, meet with alumni and business partners in those different cities. Um, and then these are also a really fun experience. Um, so uh, Patty, what are some of the locations that uh, are on deck this year? Well, it, listen, you guys are doing an MBA in Europe. It's time to discover the opportunities in Europe. Uh, so for the luxury track, uh, first of all, Victoria probably knows the answer to this. <laughs> what is the city in Europe that spends the most or and it has the most uh, money spent there on luxury items. I'm going to I'm going to wait for the the chat. Maybe Zornista you can tell us what some of the it's, answers yeah, are. Yeah, what is this city? <laughs> it's Antwerp, the diamond markets in Antwerp. So there's a couple of so for the luxury track we're taking you to Milan and Florence uh, to learn heritage and Italian craftsmanship. Uh, then they're going to be going to Amsterdam. Amsterdam is the hub for Richemont, Coty, the rest of them, and also new and up and coming designers in digital fashion. Everything that's edgy is coming out of Holland right now. So going to Amsterdam um, and seeing what's going on there. Then we're going to be going to Belgium and Switzerland. Uh, that's the luxury track, uh, the strategy and management. We're going to, Priya can talk about it, Luxembourg, Amsterdam. And then next year for the cohort joining in September 21, we're adding a trip to London town. Uh, oh now God. that uh, she's oh, jealous, now that Brexit is hit, uh, visas are easier for all nationalities. They're all on the same level. So we didn't want to take anybody anywhere they couldn't work. Uh, so it's really a hiring tour. This is why we're going, spending so much time in Holland and in Luxembourg. These are two countries that it's fairly easy to get a work visa for. We have an amazing alumni network there. And we have employers within our alumni network that have jobs for you. So that's the goal. You discover culturally how it is there and you get a job at the end. So those are the trips planned for the cohort joining 2021. And I might add that despite COVID, we still traveled last year. Mm -hmm. Safely, we changed the dates. We didn't travel when we planned. We traveled later, but we, still, we were still safe and nobody got COVID. No, and the, the field trips are really such a wonderful experience. <laughs> also get to, um, you know, develop those relationships with your classmates further um, because those are, those are also a great source of networking um, and future career growth that you have in the classroom. So aside from the field trips, uh, obviously career services is an important element of MBA, any MBA choice. Um, and so from the beginning of the year, regardless of which major you select, you will be paired with a mentor. You will also uh, work with career services and developing a plan to attack your your work uh, job search. Uh, you will also uh, meet with different independent career consultants that Patty has assembled who will focus on everything from 
um, you know, refining your soft skills to design thinking for your career search. Um, if there's anything I missed there, Patty, feel free to to, to jump no, I, and the idea is to show you everything that's out there and then you pick and choose what you walk away with. Um, I don't know, Priya, what was one of your favorite things between you had personal branding with Yuri, Luigi that did design thinking your career, the yeah. session, soft sessions, with soft skill sessions with Charles. The photo in this slide is one of the soft skill sessions we did with in October at the Lutetia Hotel uh, with Charles. Um, we took the strategy there because a lot of our networking events that we'll talk about in a minute happen in French pal in palaces in Paris. And a lot of people have never been to a palace. So they feel uncomfortable when they walk in and nervous. So we wanted to get our group all ready to walk into a palace. This is how you walk in, take a look, you're greeted, get comfortable in the area. And it, and it really helped them out. We have two soft skill sessions this week that are still in person. Uh, one of them on Friday with the strategy at Hotel Particulier Montmartre that we privatized. Nice lunch there and do the soft skills afterwards. Priya, what was your favorite thing that you did? Yeah, so uh, if you talk about uh, these sessions and one-on-one -on -one sessions, I would say the design thinking workshops are really good. They make you like really look back and also look forward in terms of how you know you bring together things and how you want to both from the career perspective as well as from people perspective so that were that was one of the workshops that we had i think twice and that was really good because there were two different speakers apart from that yes like the one-to-one -one sessions that we do especially i can speak for consulting because that is what my focus area was and we had a lot of people from industry who came forward and spoke to us so it gives us a good insight because those are the people who are currently working there and they know exactly what's required and uh, i understand that Obviously, when we network, uh, when we go to networking events, that is a chance to speak to them, but also, you know, just having those speakers come in and tell us more about what would be required for in the market tomorrow was uh, quite helpful, I would say, in the development. So these two things were uh, at least helpful for my career trajectory at ESSEC. Yeah, and so aside from those amazing uh, experiences that you have to develop your career further, uh, once a week, uh, for each track, so for luxury will happen separately from strategy, there will be an alumni or a business professional who will come in and speak to just you and your classmates. So it's a really nice intimate setting to be able to ask them whatever questions you have, get to meet them afterward and develop that relationship further. Uh, and then once a month, Patty organizes a get out of Sergi dinner in Paris, um, which has taken a little bit of form, uh, a format change and I'll let her talk about that, but it's a really nice, uh, casual kind of inviting experience where you're able to meet with different alumni and business partners. Uh, I'll let you touch on that, Patty. Well, Victoria, your cohort was the first way we, we tried it. Um, so get out of Sergi, it's Victoria's cohort that made up that name. It's not me. <laughs> um, so the idea was that you guys are terrible in a cocktail. Terrible. Uh, but you're wonderful when you get warmed up like a diesel engine and people start talking to you and they realize, oh, they're super smart. So we decided to uh, organize dinners where you actually sit down with someone uh, and actually have a conversation. So we ask you who you want to see and, and we fill it up. Now, in the times of Priya and Victoria, we would have large events. Um, we would privatize the Boudoir at China Club and have 80 people in there. So you'd have 40 students and 40 alumni and, and, and corporate people. So there was a lot going on. Obviously with COVID, uh, the, and Priya can talk about her experience and Victoria, even your experience on this, it really creates relationships with people. Um, you also learn how to master your pitch, how to do chit chat in a cocktail, how to concentrate on only focusing on maybe one or two people and not being like a frantic dog running around trying to get everything and how to create relationships with people because that's what networking is about, is creating that one-to-one -one conversation that you have with them. We also use these events to help you discover Paris. A lot of people come on an MBA, they've spent all their money on tuition, they don't have a lot of money. They can't go to nice places, it's gonna cost 150 bucks a night. So we wanna make sure that not only do you discover the beautiful uh, coastal town of Sergi Pontoise, uh, but you also discover the hot spots in Paris. So every time we have a dinner, it's at the place that everybody wants to go to. Um, they're continuing this year in the spring when restaurants open up, but in smaller formats and theme nights. Uh, one night's going to be a uh, speakeasy that we're going to privatize for only 15 people. So uh, five industry leaders uh, and alumni for 10 students on the theme of making signature cocktails. So there's going to be things like this happening 
going on this year, and then we'll see what happens next year. Priority is safety uh, and in allowing that networking experience to happen for our students. So I don't know, Victoria and Priya, what, what, what did you guys like about it? Uh, Priya, or dislike is okay too. <laughs> I always have vegan options. There's always <laughs> vegan options. This is a very big deal on the cohort, mm -hmm. vegan options. How do you take into consideration everyone's dietary restrictions? Uh, make sure that you have someone to talk to. Uh, but Priya, I'll let you go first. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, apart from the food, now that Patty mentioned it, I would say, yeah, the, that is something Patty does take care of because there are a lot of people who are vegetarian and vegans. And generally, when we go to Paris, that is something still changing in that, I would say, industry as well as in general, Paris adapting to that culture. So yeah, that is fine, I believe. Apart from that, it's a good breezer, like Victoria said, because after the end of the week or like, like the months where you have so much of packed courses as well as your like day and night working towards this intensive curriculum, you need to get out and you need some, you know, room to refresh. So I would say that uh, that space adds a lot of, uh, you know, like play, like work play kind of a balance. But obviously there is a lot of, so when you are in the classroom or at ESSEC, you're developing your professional skill sets. But when you go out in the these networking events, you're building your personal, you know, personal development or the personal skills that we talk about, where Patty mentioned building relationships because for networking that adds a lot of value. So I would say it's a very good space because going one-on-one -on -one or like meeting people in person is what actually makes you understand uh, about the things that you're trying to learn about in that particular industry or also in terms of how well uh, where do you stand what can you bring and how can how should you be presenting yourself because sometimes or moreover we come across a lot of uh, you know feedback from these uh, people like who, who come for the networking events that you know uh, maybe the students need to understand that they need to be very direct on this thing and that thing. So it's it's a very good learning experience on your personality development side as well. And as well as how what Victoria said, a good break and a breezer to just go out on some of those Friday nights monthly. Yeah. And the only thing I can really add, Priya said it best, is that I think um, a hidden gem in all of this is Patty. She make sure that you're make sure that you're talking to the right person. So if there's someone she thinks is going to be advantageous for you to meet with, um, you know, sort of like a setting you up on a blind date. She's like, you know, Priya, meet Victoria, <laughs> talk about your common interest, figure yeah. out what they are. Or, um, <laughs> you know, or even sometimes there was a little bit of like a musical chairs component to like the seated dinners of between yeah. each course, you had to sit yeah. next to someone new to get to meet people and just becoming comfortable with that opening mm -hmm. conversation and um, how to build those relationships. I, I thought they were such a fun and such a great learning experience throughout the year. It really, you see the difference and I don't know if you guys see it, but during the beginning of the year, you guys are real rough. Uh, I, I mean, Priya, I remember when we took you to Hotel Particular Montmartre in September, y'all were rough. And even Victoria, your group, do you remember when you had the luxury girls and you cornered Chanel from Chanel and then Julius wouldn't let her breathe and you said, we will release her soon. <laughs> you got from that to being elegant. When we were in Luxembourg and Amsterdam this year, the, the cohort, the strategy cohort was absolutely amazing. In Because we each night when we arrive, we do a networking cocktail with alumni that are in the city. So in Amsterdam, we privatized Soho House and did that in, in Luxembourg. And it was just the coolest thing ever to see these. And even the alumni, so the partner of EY in Luxembourg is an alumni and he was there. He said, these guys are amazing, polished, professional, poised. Those were the words that at the end of the year, they were perfection. So bravo, Priya. You make us look good. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Now with that, I'm going to move on to um, kind of what the typical ESSEC applicant or ESSEC student looks like, um, unless there's anything that uh, either of you think I missed. No, no, no. Nope. Alrighty, so what does the, the average participant look like? Well, they tend to be around 38, 30 years old um, with about six years of work experience. So at minimum, we require that you have at least three years of work experience and be at least 25 years old at the age of application. And we'll touch more on the admissions uh, process at the end. I just wanted to note that here. Um, even though the classes are a little bit more um, boutique in size, uh, so we look about at around between 25 to 30 participants per major. Um, that does not mean that it's not an internationally heavy class. So you're looking at about a 94% international class. So uh, I think for, for my 
my year, we were 68 students from 46 countries. So you really touch every corner of the world. Um, and something else uh, really um, important, I think, to share, um, because not all MBA programs have this, is that we actually do have about a 60% female participation rate in our MBA, which is quite different than some other schools. So now the application process. Uh, so we currently have two more uh, application rounds left if you would like to apply for intake in September 2021. Uh, so the next intake will be on April 4th, and then the final intake round will be on uh, June 20th. Um, so I'll, I'll move this here in case you want to take a screenshot of any uh, application requirements as I go through them. But like I mentioned before, you need to be at least 25 years old at the time of application with at least three years of work experience at the time of application. You also need to have a bachelor's degree, an advanced level of English as the, uh, the program is taught in English, and a competitive GMAT or GRE score. Um, oh, I didn't know if that was you adding something. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, perfect. Um, and then you will also need to um, do a variety of essays. So for the strategy and digital leadership uh, applicants, you will need to do two compulsory essays with the, um, but there's also an optional essay that you have the opportunity to add more color of who you are, what you bring to the MBA. And for the luxury brand management um, applicants, you will have three compulsory essays along with that one optional essay um, of anything else that you didn't cover. So now I think we're coming up to a, Priya's testimonial. Uh, so uh, Priya, I'll let you introduce yourself and then we'll kind of get into more about your experience. Sure, thank you, Victoria. So yes, like I mentioned, my name is Priya. I'm from India and I'm a 2020 Global MBA graduate. Uh, I, uh, prior to the MBA, I had four years of work experience. I was working in India and I was working in technology space. So I was a consultant for Deloitte back then. And after four years, I decided to come on an MBA to SSEC. And uh, I graduated last year. And after that, I joined EY. So at EY, I'm an assistant manager and I'm working at the London office. So that's a bit about my background. Thank you. I think, yeah, so. Oh. I guess that covers the tell us a little bit about yourself, but yeah. if there's anything else you wanted to add, feel free. <laughs> no, I think uh, we're good. If there are more questions, I can definitely get into it. Yeah. So, all right. So we come to the main part now. So if I need to describe the MBA in three words, sure. I think that three words would be less, but let's let me take up the top three things that come to my mind here. So I would say the very first thing is from the MBA, I would take off is it was a rewarding experience. So for me, it was rewarding because uh, like I, I would put it in two brackets. One was uh, the professional aspect and one is the personal aspect. I found myself coming out of the MBA as an individual where I saw growth and growth of these areas. Obviously, professional growth was the target of coming on an MBA, but personal growth was something which the program offered, I would say, very much additional to what I might have expected coming on the program because of the various things that we already talked about, the networking e events, meeting people, as well as, you know, going on field trips. And it's a boutique cohort, but we have such a huge diversity working with people in teams. And, you know, so it builds in on a lot of, you know, the teamwork characteristics, conflict resolution, ownership, what not. So these are the traits I feel that have enhanced as far of uh, being on this MBA. And professionally, obviously, the target was to get uh, the knowledge in terms of understanding financial economics and everything that comes with that curriculum. So obviously, that is what the MBA has offered me in terms of when I said it was rewarding. And uh, the second thing would be it was challenging not to, you know, put that aspect aside, because all this comes with a lot of, lot of, I would say, time energy that you put in and it's since it's just a one year intensive program there's so much that you need to be on top of in terms of your course curriculum then you know finding yourself a job and you know guess what 2019 and 2020 we had COVID as well so there was like you know added up struggles that we had to go through but I would say that the cohort was quite strong in that take because everybody like supported each other we like halfway through the program we went virtual with every activity that we were doing and we still you know 
kind of got on it very soon and there was a lot of cooperation support from school and uh, yeah we just made it through and most of us have jobs today so yeah thank i'm thankful for that though it was challenging i would just put it back there all of these things and the third thing on the mba was it was inspiring to me for my personal take on that is because when you're going through this whole process on the mba there were so many times that we were left in a situation which was so new because of you know covid like having virtual classes or you know virtual networking events these things are not so simple for both the you know party interacting there and it was a bit complicated but even in those times i saw the cohort performing so exceptionally well whether it was you know case competitions or whether it was getting a job so we were quite quick in those processes and it was motivating each one of us seeing you know the other perform so well and not at all feeling that oh this covid is going to take everything off actually it didn't take anything off so that was very inspiring for me so these are the three things i would describe my mba experience Victoria this this is Priya's being a little bit too humble. Um <laughs> sorry but this is this is the cohort strategy cohort that kicked butt in a Harvard case competition. The first time that Essex has ever participated they made it to the finals of Harvard case competition beating the likes of MIT and Seattle and the rest of them. Their percentage of employment is higher than Harvard. When you look at these people in this photo right now So you've got uh, Eddie and Ariel that are working in French, Axida is working in cybersecurity in Holland, Alejandro who has his choice of offers in Paris right now because he still and comes and sees me and works in my we work with me. Uh then we've got Priya in London Stone who started his own business. He was a, he got a special talent visa for France. It's amazing. Vishak, call Vishak. Everybody call Vishak if you have a question on Amazon. Uh he got hired at Amazon. And then honestly you've got Tapioca who I don't know what it, he's going to do he's got so many talents and offers I and mean, this guy is amazing so you have in this one photo a really good photo I love it a good photo of the success that they they did they put a lot of pressure on each other and they helped each other priya vishak and akshita ran each other through interviews questions all the time pushing 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 and the, the way they pushed each other and they helped each other it shows today because they've all got amazing jobs they did what they wanted to do they came to work in europe and they're rocking it thank you very much that is no nice. thank you you guys did it well no i think you also touched on a really important element um that kind of goes to the boutique size of the program but also your classmates they really are there to also help you foster that professional development whether that's uh when they get into a company um and you know uh referring you to a position or uh mm-hmm. I know someone who knows someone whose cousin is married to the person that you should talk to or mm-hmm. um giving you sometimes brutal feedback when you need it most um I think that that's also a really something remarkable about the program and the people that are on it all right so next question priya how did essay contribute to help you achieve your goals <laughs> Sure thank you I think I spoke a lot in the last one but yes I'll still try to answer this one so my goal like let me first be clear on that like I said I was working in India for four years and I was in consulting so I was very clear my motivation of coming on an MBA was a career growth that I was looking for myself and I have that today so my goal was that i would stay in consulting because i was i was doing that and i liked it just that the progression that happens when you just remain in the industry and just not you know upskill yourself on time to time basis takes takes a lot of time for you to grow there so that is the reason i took oh, that one year break and i came on my mba upskilled myself and i'm back in industry doing consulting but obviously i would say here at ey and also so it offered me the career growth that i was looking for and the contribution came in two aspects both professional like i said because mba brought in that curriculum where it brought me the basic understanding of how because i work in finance today so it's a financial services client financial services industry and to have that base knowledge of finance economics and everything was something that came professionally with uh, the mba and also like i mentioned earlier as well that being a consultant on shore especially working in europe you work with clients a lot first time so you need to have that personality where you can go and confidently you know pitch yourself with the project ideas and what you're trying to sell for from, from the company you're representing so that confidence boost i would say has also been brought in because of the different circumstances that have been 
like we have faced on the MBA. And uh, yeah, so that's how I say contributed towards it. Well said. Mm -hmm. And so the last, the last thing, any advice or recommendation to future potential candidates? All right, yes, of course, there's a lot that I would have to say, but we already said a lot of it, but uh, still I would um, like to say that MBA is a stepping stone. Everybody can achieve what they want. It's not like you just come here for growth. You can also come here for, you know, searching your career trajectory because from my cohort itself, I know people who have been working in different industries or doing all together a different job and they work in a different sector altogether. So even that is achievable. It's just that you should be knowing what you need, what you want. And it's also like, okay, to be open and explore what's there in the market that is being offered. So, so it's like, I'm just saying both the things there, but as much as you need to be sure about what you want next, you should also be open about what the market has to offer. And that is what gets you somewhere good, I would say, not like anywhere. And the three things on the MBA which are very critical is having that confidence. And confidence comes when you are on that journey and you're constantly working towards some like, so, like scenarios where you have to think and do it there and then. So you'll build that confidence when you succeed in those scenarios. So that is something that will happen on the MBA. Second is perseverance because there will be so many obstacles that if you just give up, okay, COVID happened. We are not getting job because everybody's saying there are no jobs in the market. So come on, you just don't have to listen to everything that is being uh, said out there. You somewhere need to believe in yourself and just get going. So that perseverance is another thing that is very important. And the third, I would say, is being a little patient with yourself because sometimes things take time because it's such an intensive course of like, just 12 months, you would not even realize when that passed. So it's okay to give yourself three, four months, maybe post MBA and just, uh, you know, prepare and try for the job and be patient with yourself because it is going to happen. And that's a natural, I would say, normal process. It's not like you need to graduate with the job. So yeah, that's my take from the MBA and recommendation for potential people coming forward on the program. No, thank you so much. And that's actually also advice that uh, Denny Morisset had given me. Uh, he's one of the professors that we have on the luxury brand management track. I remember when I was applying, I asked him for um, any advice he had when I came to even writing the essays. He was like, be specific, but open. And I remember scratching my head leaving that conversation, like, how do I achieve that in an essay? But it truly is what Priya talked about, too, is just having an idea of what your goals post MBA are. Um, but also remaining open to all the possibilities and all of the different industries and paths that you're exposed to throughout the year. Um, mm -hmm. You'll meet with people through some of, um, there was a really interesting gentleman at one of the Get Out of Sergi events who started that uh, that boxing, uh, the tires that he used yeah, for the boxing. Yeah, Yama. Uh, Yama. yeah um, who, I mean, you just meet so many interesting people throughout yeah. the year that so, you're like, how did you come up with that idea? And through talking to them and creating a relationship with them, it opens your world up yes, more yes. ways than you could truly imagine. Um, I agree with that? So now with that, um, we will open it up to questions. So uh, Zornista, uh, I'll let you sort of uh, aggregate them. I don't know if I can see yeah. <laughs> Great, thank you very much, Victoria, Buddy, and uh, Bria. We have one question, which is, uh, how can I decide if the full-time MBA or the global MBA is more suitable for me? Uh, I mean, I'm happy to weigh in unless Patty or Priya, you have something. Well, well I think it, it, it's, it's, it's a question that there is. So do you want to do your full-time MBA and just concentrate on your MBA or do you want to work at the same time? It seems pretty clear cut. Uh, if you want to keep your job and is this person, do we know if this person's from France? Because if you're not from France and you want to do a part-time MBA, ESSEC is not the right choice because you'd just be sitting around with a lot of free time all the time. So I would suggest a full time. Uh, I don't know. The person that asked that question, can they tell us where they live? Um, I don't know. Priya, Victoria? Yeah, I would say that it really depends on, you know, what your personal situation is. So if you can take that year um, to really focus on yourself and developing, um, you know, your skill set, um, I think both Priya and I would highly recommend it. However, we do understand that sometimes that is not in the cards for you and that you do need to still continue to work. Um, so if you want to talk about that a little bit further on like a more personal level, um, you know, when we wrap up the session, there will be a slide for, um, our contact information and we can set up a time to explore that more in depth. 
Um, but it really comes down to what your personal circumstances are and what you're you're able to do. True, Victoria, I agree with you because uh, like Patty mentioned, I think part time is only like the experienced. We have two programs on the MBA as well, and uh, people who are working in France can only pursue that. And somebody coming from outside France would have to prefer the full time MBA. True. Is there any hey. Thanks. Yeah, uh, we have another question that is related to, to the career development of the students. Is there a career center to support students in their employment after graduation? Well, you should be hired and employed before graduation, uh, number one. Uh, it, it's called the talent center and there's no talent. We have a specific talent team that takes care of only the MBAs. Uh, it's not based within the undergraduate offer. Um, not only do you have the support of this team, you also have the support of the alumni network, uh, which is over 50K strong to help you with that. But you should be actually working before graduation or shortly afterwards. The cohort that Priya is on, it's 87.5% placement within three months of graduation. So if you're not uh, employed at that point, we definitely want to see you because something's up. And I mean, also to kind of echo that, um, your your program director, aka Patty, um, your professors are really going to be hands on with you. Also, um, you know, showcasing you some sort of some offers that they've also received that could be interesting to you. So you really are going to be supported um, throughout the entire year, and then even once you leave campus. I think that's also what's nice is that there is that um, lifelong learning and that relationship that you will have also with your your program managers and your, your professors that you'll have when you leave. Thank you. We have one more question. If I don't have very impressive academic results and working experience, uh, what can I do to stand out and still get admitted? Yeah, so again, I, you know, I'll, I'll invite you to, to reach out to us so we have um, time to maybe speak one-on-one because -on -one, um, that is a little bit of a broad question to, to answer. Um, you know, we, we take into consideration your entire um, application. So we don't just look, you know, just at your GMAT score or just at your, um, you know, GPA from university. Um, we, you know, we, we take into consideration all of it, um, but let's definitely set up a time to speak. And that, that's open for anyone else who's listening, if that wasn't your question. Um, you know, myself and my colleagues who are also on the recruitment team are happy to kind of talk to you and figure out how to position yourself or what additional resources you might need to, to consider. Well, I would also just say, have a story. Uh, have a story, maybe. what's interesting, everybody's got some story that's not crazy, but have some story that's interesting about you. So you weren't good in school, you, you have a, a problem in your work. We had Stone last year who presented himself to everybody, a future employer by saying, well, every job I've ever had, the, the company's gone under gone bankrupt. Interesting story, this guy. And, and guess what? He's starting his own business in France. He's the one with the special talent visa. So everybody's got a story. What's yours? Let us know what your story is. Great. Then everyone has a chance. So this, yeah, have to be bold and strike. And nice, nice. And nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure. Um, we, I don't see any more questions. It seems well, we've never been so shy. clear. Look at you ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so there's, there's something else that the people often uh, ask. Uh, is there any, are there any scholarship opportunities? Uh, that word makes me, yeah, I go visceral. Uh, it, it's like, okay, so scholarships will never pay for your tuition. Mm. And it's a good question because you need to figure out your budget. This program is close to 100K when you add in your tuition, your living fees and everything else. So a scholarship is gonna give you a couple of grand, but you need to plan on how you're gonna pay for everything around that. So a scholarship, I'll give you an example. If you got a great GMAT, you're gonna get what? 2K? Yeah. No. So you think about other things of financing and, and to do that um, before depending on scholarships for things. I don't know, Priya, what was, if you want to share that, what was your monthly budget or Victoria? I mean, Victoria, did you live in Paris the whole time? Priya stayed in Sergi, loyal to Sergi. Uh, Victoria, did you, you lived in town. I mean, how much did you guys pay rent every month? 
yeah, so I, I started off on campus um, in Sergileu, the dorm. Um, and then I, I moved into Paris. Um, I lived in the seventh, uh, right by Eiffel Tower. So my rent was not the, the most digestible amount, um, but I would say, um, you know, the housing on campus has offers ranging between maybe 600 euros to about 800 euros a month. Uh, whereas Paris, <laughs> you can, if you don't have a very clear idea of what your budget is, you can be spending way beyond your means. Um, so that really, um, you know, I would say, kind of on an average, you're maybe looking at rent around like 1100 to 1200 euros a month, maybe. Um, Priya? <laughs> yeah, so I would not say anything about Paris, but yes, uh, I preferred being in Sergi because obviously the school was there, we were running day and night for, you know, classes and collaboration and teamwork. So I prefer and I would recommend also to be on campus, especially for strategy majors, because we don't need to run that much to Paris unless we have the networking nights. And also it's very student friendly, the budget. And um, yeah, so like you mentioned, the budget amount is the same and that's there clearly on the website as well. And I feel that, uh, yeah, that's that's good for a budget. There is um, nothing that you would not say it's not under student uh, accommodation budget. So yeah, it's fair. Yeah, that is one of the things that needs to be taken into consideration, of course. Yeah. Um, well, ladies, we actually, you actually answered all of the questions that were, were asked here. Uh, do you have something more to add? I, I just want to add that we have Priya, who's a star from India, but we also have Vikshak and Akshita uh, that you can contact if you want questions so that Priya doesn't get all of So <laughs> Vikshak and Akshita, uh, please contact them if you have any questions. Uh, Jennifer Thomas as well, you know, we didn't yeah. talk about Jennifer Bob, no, <laughs> all these people you can contact. We've got a wealth of wonderful graduates uh, from everywhere, but do contact Ishak and Akshita. Priya, does that do it for <laughs> Thank you? you. <laughs> it does, Patty. Thank you so much. I was ready you for call. this. You can call after, Akshita you know. afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure. I'll let oh, you when, know. When you see the, the contact details of the admissions team on the slide, uh, we'll also take care to send around the video recorded of this current webinar so that even if you missed something, you might get back to it and listen it again. Um, well, thank you all of you. Thanks to all of you for watching and special thanks to Victoria, Priya and Paddy for taking the time to give us this uh, inspirational and informative session. Uh, I hope we'll keep in touch and we'll be looking Looking forward to, to see you again. Thank you. Thank you so Victoria much. Victoria and Priya, it was so nice to see you guys again. Nice to see Thank you. you. Miss see you, you soon. Bye-bye. Nice evening. Bye-bye.